Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. Over the last few lectures we have been discussing some an interesting topic which is on CH activation. CH activation is a leading area of interest in organometallic chemistry because it has significant utility in both academic as well as industrial world. An important drawback to this uh, reaction, uh, th uh, this problem is that this prom problem is very challenging and not a very simple one. And that arises primarily due to strong CH bonds and also because of large number of CH bond present in several compounds they, their ubiquitousness also poses a selectivity problem in CH activation chemistry. So, these bonds are difficult to break and also very difficult to selectively a perform uh, the cleavage of these. We have also discussed in the last lecture about various methods or various types of CH bond activation chemistry that has been uh, practiced. And what he, uh, one comes around is there are both kinds of CH activation possible. One is intermolecular the other is intramolecular. Of these two types of CH activation that is uh, uh, possible, the intramolecular CH activation is less challenging whereas, intermolecular CH activation is more challenging. to attempt. Now, in our discussion on CH activation in the last lecture, in our discussion on CH activation in the last lecture, we have started off with uh, looking at intramolecular CH activation reactions. And one example that we looked at was that oxidative addition of a CH bond of an aromatic ring. onto a transition metal. And that resulted in a complex, a iridium complex shown here. Where, where this hydrogen and this carbon has undergone oxidative addition. So, this method involves the CH activation of this aromatic ring across iridium and as a result the oxygen state of iridium increased and in the current complex it is iridium 3 whereas it started off from a iridium 1 complex
So, because of this oxidative addition of of a CH bond, the iridium 1 center increased its oxidation uh, from iridium 1 to iridium 3. As a result, both coordination number increased by 2 as and oxidation state also increases by 2. And this type of reaction that we discussed are called orthometallation or cyclometallation. Orthometallation because the CH bond ortho to the aryl ring gets activated and make a metal carbon bond and cyclometallation is because there is a uh, cyclic ring structure that is formed that contains a metal carbon uh, bond as a part of the cyclic ring. So, one has to then look at various methods or the mechanism in which this uh, CH activation proceed whether in in case of intermolecular or intramolecular reactions. A careful probe into this CH activation reaction shows that CH activation occurs via a interesting interaction called agostic interaction. that precedes CH activation during this oxidative addition process. So, that sort of implies that acoustic interaction initiates the CH activation mechanism or acoustic interaction triggers the CH activation pathway. And what it turns out that in this acoustic interaction the CH bond is weakened. is weakened considerably, but not cleaved. So, this is a very interesting interaction which weakens the CH bond and not cleave it completely. And hence, acoustic interaction is often represented by the following. implying acoustic interaction. Usually acoustic interaction occurs in electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated complexes. And what one needs to look at is how does this metal center influences or facilitates the CH bond activation through this weak interaction. Even though the weak the interaction is kind of weak, but it has very significant impact in cleaving a very strong bond. Agosting interaction may be weak, 
in nature but cleaves a strong ch bond and that sort of puts or that sort of makes this acoustic important interaction very important and then so if one were to understand ch activation one should begin by understanding acoustic interaction and one finds that acoustic interaction occurs for complexes which are electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated so this unsaturation is a hallmark of complexes that would show acoustic interaction let us illustrate this with the example shown here for this complex it a 3 c 8 h 13 fe p o m e 3 whole 3 bf4 the structure is given here it has 3 po me 3 moieties bound to this eight member ring now this is 16 valence electron complex and what it has is an acoustic interaction occurring between the hydrogen at this position so one of this hydrogen interacts with the iron center in a acoustic fashion which is m type interaction now the evidence for the existence of this interaction came from x-ray crystallography as this compound was structurally characterized and what came out from that is that this ch bond interacts and has considerably elongated and this distance is which is hydrogen to iron is about 188 picometer and this carbon to hydrogen is about 116 six 
picometer. Now, the, this interaction of the C H bond with the metal leading to elongation, elongation of the C H bond. to 116 ppm whereas a uh, free ch bond which is not involved in acoustic interaction that have a distance of about 110 picometer so a free ch bond which does not have acoustic interaction is around 10 picometer whereas in this complex as it shows a uh, ch m acoustic interaction this bond has increased from 110 picometer to 116 picometer as a result of this acoustic interaction so what we see that this kind of acoustic interaction is of a non classical two electron three center bond and similar to the B H B bonds that we are familiar with displaying such non classical three center two electron bonds. So, the X ray structure of this compound pro proved the presence of a agastic interaction. It also showed that as a result of agastic interaction that the C H bond undergoing the acoustic interaction has increased its length to 116 ppm with respect to let us say a C H which does not undergo acoustic interaction which would have a average bond length of 110 ppm. Not only there was a increase C H bond length, the hydrogen is seen interacting with iron kind of designated by H dot M. This is a weak interaction and has a distance of about 188 picometer. Now, this structural characterization of this complex thus establishes the fact that 18 CH activation is prevalent in this particular complex and many other complexes for both electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated metal centers. Now, X ray is not the only way to ascertain the presence of CH activation. Sometimes in X ray, it is difficult to obtain the data for hydrogen atom and hence neutral di diffraction becomes more useful than X-ray for discerning CH activations and there are other spectroscopic techniques which will allow us to understand the presence of CH activation. So, hence one can say the presence of CH activation can be established by let us say neutron diffraction to be more precise sometimes X ray diffraction as well where hydrogen is located where acoustic
CH bond length is around 113 to 119 picometer where for free CH this is about 110 picometer. Similarly, proton NMR is a useful method spectroscopic technique for identifying CH agostic interactions and they show upfield shifts in the region from del minus 5 ppm to minus 15 ppm. So, this is really very up shielded, up field shielded proton resonance which can be easily picked up in proton NMR as most of the other proton resonances they appear from between 0 to 10 ppm. Furthermore, in carbon 13 NMR the presence of agostic interaction is also prominent. As mentioned earlier that agostic interaction leads to weakening in CH bond which results in lowering of the coupling constants and that can be observed in carbon 13 NMR where 1 J C H coupling constant the reduced coupling constant can be something around 75 to 100 hertz. Similarly, infrared spectroscopy would also take up this agostic interaction where it shows CH stretching at lower wave number energy wave wave number new CH is between 2700 to 2300 centimeter inverse as opposed to free CH which is around 3000 centimeter inverse. So, the weakening of CH interaction as a result of the acoustic interaction can be reflected in IR CH stretching where the free CH stretching that comes at higher energy of about 3000 gets reduced to that of 2700 to 2300 because of the presence of agostic interaction. The same can be seen in lowering of coupling constant in carbon 13 NMR and proton NMR showed off field shifts 
in the region from minus 5 to minus 15 ppm. As a result of this CH interacting with metal center, the hydrogen in the CH becomes acidic. and it shows increased acidic character. Now, let me summarize the points that we have discussed in this particular lecture. We began by looking at various types of CH activation examples that are known. In the start, we looked at intramolecular CH activation, which was a orthometallation type CH activation in which a ortho hydrogen of aryl ring oxidatively added onto the metal center. We also looked at the mechanism how this CH activation proceeded and found that CH activation initiates with an important interaction which is agostic CHM type interaction. This agostic CHM type interaction is a weak one, but it has significant implication as this results in cleaving of a very strong CH bond. So, even though by itself it is a weak interaction, this agostic interaction, but it has tremendous implication and significance in terms of being able to cleave a very strong CH bond. We also discussed about the criteria that are required for the existence of agostic interaction and what was discussed is that, that metal complexes have to be electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated to exhibit C agostic type interaction. The presence of an agostic interaction in metal complexes can be confirmed by X-ray single crystal diffraction studies where the complex exhibiting agostic interaction can be structurally characterized. As mentioned, agostic interaction weakens a CH bond, but does not cleave it all the way. And this weakening of CH bond is reflected in increase in CH bond length with respect to free CH that is not undergoing agostic interaction. And we had seen in the particular example that the bond length increased to about 116 picometer as opposed to 110 picometer for non-interacting CH bonds. The weakening of CH bonds can also be picked up in proton enamel spectroscopy where this proton appears in highly upfill shifted region between minus 5 to minus 15 ppm. The weakening of bond also is reflected in carbon 13 NMR spectroscopy where a smaller coupling constant uh, is visible and this coupling constant arises between 75 to 100 hertz and the same can be picked up in infrared spectroscopy where this agostically interacting CH appears as a much lower energy at 2700 to 2300 wave numbers as opposed to the free CH appearing at 3000 centimeter inverse. And because of this increased interaction of CH to metal centered in an agostic type interaction, the CH becomes increasingly acidic in nature and this interaction increases the acidity of the CH group. So, with this we sort of looked at the mechanism or mode of action of the CH activation which originates with an important uh, interaction called agostic interaction 
which we have learned in this lecture and looked at how it manifests in different spectroscopic techniques that allows us to characterize this uh, interaction. We are going to look a bit more detail in the CH activation as well as acoustic interaction and in various kinds of intermolecular as well as intramolecular CH activation process, what are their implications, how good they are and how people are utilizing all this interaction in, in carrying out CH activation followed by CH functionalization in subsequent lecture. So, I look forward to the next lecture that will uh, have this uh, elaborate discussion on CH activation particularly of intermolecular type and also their implication in various uh, catalytic processes. So, with this thank you for being with me in this lec uh, lecture and I look forward to being with you in next lecture.